Hi everyone, thanks so much for joining me today. My name is Amanda. I typically teach my yoga classes out at the beautiful Essential Farms Yoga Studio, but for the time being, I am teaching these videos out of the comfort of my home. Now, if this is your first time checking out the Essential Farms YouTube channel, welcome. And if you're a returning viewer, welcome back. I'm so happy that you are here. So let's go ahead and get started. Uh, for today's practice, I just have the usual props that I uh, recommend for having available. A blanket, a yoga mat, of course, and two yoga blocks and a yoga strap. Now, if you don't have a blanket handy, the yoga strap, the yoga blocks, you can absolutely still practice with me today and no worries. So let's go ahead and get started. So for uh, centering today, I thought we would start on our backs and then after centering, we'll move right into um, hand to big toe pose series. So even though we're not gonna be using our yoga strap um, for centering, grab it anyways. Now, if you don't have a yoga strap, men's necktie will work just fine in a pinch and uh, so will a scarf if you happen to have a scarf that you don't mind using. Um, so with that said, I like to take a little extra cushion under my head. So I'm going to set my blanket there and then we're going to come into constructive rest. So for constructive rest, I'm going to move these also out of my way. You're just going to take your feet wide to the sides of your yoga mat, and then you'll allow your knees to fall in towards each other. And then before getting too comfortable here, I like to press into my inner heels, and I'm just gonna take my hands, and I'm going to kind of smooth or scoop my butt towards my heels. That usually um, makes laying like this a little more comfortable. And uh, knees fall in and support each other, if I didn't say that already. And for today, let's just rest hands on the belly here. Closing your eyes as you're ready. Relax your face muscles, relax your tongue and jaw. Allowing yourself to start the practice of the present moment here, trying to allow thoughts, events of the day to pass the best that you can. And again, starting that practice of the present moment here. So in other words, if any thoughts start to bubble up during centering or even throughout your practice today. Note the thoughts, try not to hold on to them, make storylines out of them, but just allow them to pass from the mind like a leaf being carried away on a breeze and you'll come back to the sensations of the body and the breath. And before we move into observing the breath. Just to notice the body resting on the earth here. Noticing where feet touch the earth, where back body touches the earth. where head touches the earth or blanket if you're using one. Noticing where clothing touches skin. Noticing any sounds around you. Could be sounds from your home, such as the refrigerator kicking on. 
air or heat kicking on. If you have your windows open, you may hear the sounds of nature, wind rustling through the trees, sounds of birds chirping, maybe sounds of traffic, maybe sounds of neighbors. Just notice all of those sounds. Just like our thoughts, try not to hold on to any one thought or any one sound, excuse me. Notice them, accept them, and then just allow them to become a tapestry of background sounds as you start to become in tune with your breath here. Observing the breath. Noticing how as you inhale, the belly gently presses into your hands. As you fill the belly up like a balloon. As you exhale, belly gently moves away from your hand as you draw the belly button towards the spine. Nice, long, satisfying breaths here. In the next few moments here, I invite you and encourage you to set an intention for your yoga practice today. You can do so by saying it three times mentally and gently letting it go. And then in your own time, Go ahead and allow your eyes to gently flutter open. And as mentioned, we'll move right into our hand to big toe pose series of stretches. Now, I'm sitting, laying right next to my couch, so you think I would learn by now after 40 some videos being made, um, but I need to move a little further away from my couch so I have plenty of space for my, my legs to move. Um, and just take note, if you're laying a little close to anything in your home or wherever you may be practicing, okay, that should be plenty. And I'm just gonna come to lay back on my back. I'm gonna set my blanket out of my way, grab my yoga strap, men's necktie, or a scarf that you don't mind using. And Let's just start, oh, let's start with the left side today. Why not? So I'm just gonna take my strap along the bottom of my foot and I'm extending my left leg up towards the sky, right leg is to the earth here. Now take a moment and check in with your right hamstring. Uh, if your ha right hamstring feels tight and it feels better to you to step your right foot to the mat instead of having the leg extended, by all means, you can absolutely do that. Now, if you have your right leg extended to the earth, 
spiral that inner right thigh towards the earth to help ground this femur bone. Inhale here. Now, as you exhale, you'll begin to gently pull your left leg towards you until you start to feel a nice stretch along the back of your left leg. And we're just starting to get warmed up here. So move really mindfully. There's no need to go full steam ahead. We'll pause here. Now, even though we're not stretching the left leg, be mindful that you keep that right leg active by flexing your right foot. Inhale, as you exhale, now you'll grab the yoga strap in the left hand. Your right arm is gonna come straight out from your shoulder, palm facing down. Exhale, slowly, mindfully allow your left leg to release open over to the left. Now, if this is too much of a stretch for your left inner thigh, the groin, you can always grab a yoga block if you have a yoga block, or I don't have a yoga block handy there, down there. Um, so I'm just gonna take my blanket that I do have handy, and I'm going to fold it, and I'm gonna kind of stick it under that outer left leg so I have a little more support here. Now you can look out over left fingertips if it's not too much for your neck. Still flexing my right foot. Inhale, as you exhale, take your leg back through the center, grab the yoga strap with your right hand, left arm this time comes out from the shoulder, and then I'm going to allow my left leg to release over to the right. And of course, my couch is still in my way a little bit, even though I moved myself and my mat. But anyways, left leg comes over to the right, left shoulder blade um, rooted to the earth. You can look out over left fingertips here. And breathing. And inhale as you exhale, you'll come back through to center. Go ahead and release the yoga strap along the bottom of the left foot. And we'll practice that all on the right side. And I'm gonna move even further away here. There we go. And as you're ready, you'll go ahead and place your strap along the bottom of right foot. Extend the right leg to the earth or I'm sorry, your left leg is to the earth now. Inhale, as you exhale, you'll begin to gently pull your right leg towards you. Again, just until you feel a nice stretch along the back of your right leg. And as you're satisfied here, remember, you don't ever have to be on my exact counts throughout your practice, but as you're satisfied here, grab the yoga strap in the right hand, left arm comes out from the shoulder, exhale, carefully, slowly allow that right leg to release open over to the right, looking towards the sky or look out over your left fingertips. Again, take some extra support under that outer right thigh as needed. And inhale, exhale, right leg to center, grab the yoga strap in the left hand, right arm comes out from the shoulder, palm faces down. As you exhale, allow your right leg to release over to the left, right shoulder blade rooted to the earth. Look out over right fingertips if it's not too much for your neck. And 
them in your own time. Come back through to center, head comes back to center. And then go ahead and release your yoga strap, set it off to the side. And then from here, I'm gonna scoot myself back to center of my mat, knees up towards the sky. Let's come into our um, eye of the needle post stretch next. So you'll take your left ankle to rest to right knee, right thigh. Continue to draw your left knee forward throughout this stretch. And then as you're ready, you're going to pick your right foot up. Now, as you do that, this left knee wants to creep towards you. Don't let it draw it forward as mentioned, flexing both feet. And you'll use your hands to gently pull your right knee towards you. Now, if it feels better to you to use your yoga strap, you can take your yoga strap and use that instead to help, instead of using your hands to help draw that right knee towards you. Now stay here or see what it feels like to extend your right toes up towards the sky. And whether you extended that right leg or kept it right where it was, go ahead and begin to flex and point your right foot. Slowly warming up the ankle, feeling that nice stretch along the top of the right foot. <clears throat> Excuse me. And then make circles with your right toes. Take the circle in the opposite direction. Inhale as you exhale, right foot to the earth. I'm going to move my yoga strap out of my way, but now I'm going to come into a twist. So I'm going to keep my left foot to my right knee, right thigh, arms out from the shoulders, and I'm using my outer left foot to help draw my right knee towards the earth while I look out over my right fingertips here. Inhale, as you exhale, let's come back through to center, left foot to the mat, eye of the needle post stretch on that opposite side. Take what variation suits you, whether it's grabbing behind the knee or using your yoga strap. Pull that left knee towards you, flex both feet, but again, don't forget, you want your right knee drawing away from you. Smooth, steady breath. Now let's stay here, or like we just did, extend your left toes up towards the sky and begin to point and flex. Point and flex. And make circles <clears throat> with your left foot. And take your circle in the opposite way. Beautiful. From here, right foot stays where it is. Left foot touches the earth, arms out from the shoulders. Use your right foot to help draw your left foot towards the earth, or your left knee, excuse me, towards the earth. Looking out over left fingertips, and again, feel free to close the eye. Sometimes helps us to better tune in to how the stretch feels. Inhale, as you exhale, come back through to center, right foot to the earth, and then let's roll to either side of the body to then use the strength of our hands and arms to gently push ourselves up. Now, we'll come to our tabletop position, and before I do that, I'm gonna move my mat a little further towards my couch so when I stand up, my head is not gonna get cut off in the video. Great. Okay, so I like to take some extra cushion under my knees with my blanket. Feel free to do that too. So for, um, we're moving into cow-cat. So for cow-cat, knees about hip distance apart, wrists are going to be stacked under the shoulders, spread the fingers. I like to say to fan the fingers like little fans. Middle finger faces the front of your mat. Press down through your hands so you're not hanging in your shoulders. 
Now take a second, peek between your knees if you can see your feet, move them out so you can't see them, so that they're right behind the knees. And as you're ready, cow cat stretch, inhale. Lift the sit bones, glide the heart forward, look up if you can. Now exhale, round the back, tuck the chin towards the chest, belly button pulls up towards the spine. And again, inhale, exhale. Continuing at your own pace, following your breath here. Let's do two more rounds. Now coming back to your neutral spine position or tabletop position, um, we're going to do knee circles. So for knee circles, it's just like what they sound like. You're, let's start by taking right knee out from the hip and you're just gonna make circles. Even after doing these for a short time, you may notice your hip starts to feel a little tired, which mine definitely does anyways. Go ahead and switch up your circle. Kind of just goes to show you how simple a stretch can be so effective. And go ahead and set right knee down, left knee up from the hip. Go ahead and make your circles. A little hip opening there, if you heard that. My hip cracked. Go ahead and switch up your circle. And go ahead and release. Go ahead and take big toes to touch knees as wide as feels good to you. And we'll go ahead and sit, sink it back. Indoor extended child's pose. Rest your forehead to the mat or a block. If you've practiced with me before, you know I like to come up onto fingertips here instead of having palms to the mat. Feel free to do so as well. I like to do that because it just, it really opens up the armpits. It deepens the stretch along my shoulders or along my, on my biceps. Now from here, if you're resting on fingertips, go ahead and bring palms to the earth here. Looking up towards the fingertips now, since I have a cushion under my knees, I'm going to have to come to tabletop to move it. But if you weren't using a cushion, you'll move into um, Cobra. So I got to take a second, move that out of my way. There we go. And as mentioned, we'll come on to the belly. And I'm going to move this too, actually. <laughs> there we go. So onto the belly, wrists at the bottom of the rib cage. If your elbows are kind of hanging out in space here like little uh, chicken wings, remember we root them to side body, wrists at the bottom of the rib cage, spiral your inner thighs, gentle tuck of the tailbone as you inhale and shoot your elbows towards the back of your mat as you lift the heart, but also remember to relax your shoulders. Exhale, soften to the earth. Toes are tucked, hands stacked under shoulders, downward facing dog as you're ready. Stretching your heels towards the earth. Pedaling one foot, then the other. Fingers are still spread wide. Middle finger faces the front of your mat, shoulders away from your ears. Exhale, release the knees down. Extend a child's pulse. We'll stay here for two breaths, maybe three. Really up to you. Looking up towards the fingertips, cobra pose. Exhale to the earth, down dog. Okay. Lucy's favorite. That's Lucy. She's just making that noise. Sorry about that. Our rescued greyhound. She's just off camera in her, her crate. <laughs> Snoozing. I think she may be dreaming. 
exhale, extended child's pose. We'll move through that sequence one more time. Two breaths here, maybe three. Remember, you're always welcome to come back into this position throughout your practice. Listen to what your body's telling you. All right, let's go for it. Look up towards the fingertips, lift the hips up. Exhale to the belly, inhale to cobra. Exhale, soften. Down dog. Now, from downward facing dog, we're going to come into three legged down dog. Now, three legged down dog does not sushi today. Just stay in down dog, or you can always come back into child's pose. So, I'm actually going to take my left foot a little closer to the center of my mat. As I inhale, I'm going to take my right leg towards the sky. Head and neck is heavy. I'm going to bend my right knee, right heel comes towards right buttock, and then I'm going to stack my right heel over the left. Hi. <laughs> then from here, we'll go, we're going to transition into pigeon. So I square my hips towards the mat, look up towards my fingertips. Now my right knee is going to come through over towards my right thumb. Now, as I come into this, I am, throughout this whole pose, I'm drawing my right hip back, left hip forward. We don't want so much movement here from that front knee, and I like to make fists here. So, allow the hips to sink towards the earth. You can release your back knee down, top of the foot down. Relax your shoulders. Just make sure as you come into this pose that you're not hanging out here onto this right hip. Right hip back, left hip forward. If you need a little extra support under that outer right sit bone, you can take a block. I have my blanket. My blanket is in a handy spot here. So I'm just going to take my blanket, fold it in half, give myself a little support here. Now, I just mentioned you really don't want to be sitting or falling out onto that right hip, which we actually are going to do to come into our next pose, which is head of the knee pose. So if you have support, move it out of your way. I'm gonna come onto palms. So I'm going, I am going to roll out onto that right hip, and then I'm going to flip around. So my left leg is forward. My right foot is going to come along left leg. Flex your left foot, heart, turns to face that left knee. Externally rotate the arms out from the shoulders. Nice big inhale. Exhale, lead with your collarbones. Pit of the belly lifts in and up as you fold over this left leg. Now allow your hands to rest fall wherever they fall today. So that could be alongside the leg, on the leg. You can grab your left foot if it's available to you or don't hesitate to use your yoga strap here along the bottom of your left foot to allow yourself to move a little deeper into the stretch. Inhale, as you exhale, let's gently release. Now to come out of this, we're going to come into downward facing dog. So to get there, we're literally, we're just going to take the arms up alongside the ears. I'm going to windmill the arms towards that right knee, plant my hands down, and I'm going to press into my hands to step back to my downward facing dog. And pedaling things out usually always feels pretty good after spending some time in pigeon. 
And once again, step your right foot more towards the center of your yoga mat. Kick your left leg towards the sky. Press down through your right heel. Head and neck is heavy. Then from here, I bend my left knee. Left heel comes towards my left buttock. And then I see if I can stack my left hip over the right without all the weight dumping into that left side. Even the weight out throughout the hands. Square the hips towards the mat. Look up towards your fingertips. This time we're taking that left knee over towards the left thumb. Drop the back knee down. Untuck the toes. Hands stacked under the shoulders. Draw your left hip back, right hip forward. Relax your shoulders. Take that extra support as needed under that left sit bone. Again, please be mindful that you're not hanging out here on the left hip, but hips are squared towards the front of your mat. Pausing here for three, two, and one. So this time for our head of the knee pose, we're going to kind of allow ourselves to fall on to that left hip. And then we flip the right toes up towards the sky. So right leg is extended. Left foot comes to rest. Turn the heart. Heart lines up with your right knee. Externally rotate the arms up or out and up and exhale lead with your collarbones as you fold over this right leg and again use your yoga strap as needed continue to flex your right foot back of your right thigh continues to reach towards the earth here pausing here for three two and one gently release take the arms up windmill the arms plant those hands down shoulder distance apart lift the hips up and back pedal things out wiggle the hips gently shake the head from side to side maybe up and down and begin to walk the feet towards the hands or hands towards the feet whichever you choose is just fine when they get there Inhale to gently look up, lengthen fingertips or hands to the shins, knees, or thighs like so. Exhale, soften, bend your knees, allow your head and neck to be heavy. Reverse your swan dive. Gentle arch back. And exhale, hands to heart center, Tadasana Mountain Pose. Let's move through uh, some rounds of a half sun salutation. So I'm going to spin around just because I like to look out my window that I have right here and not so much look into my hallway. <laughs> a little more exciting looking out the window. So coming towards the front of my mat, hands to heart center. Inhale. We shoot fingertips down, out, and up. Gentle arch back. Exhale, so one, dive it down. Head and neck is heavy. Inhale, gently look up, lengthen the fingertips or come halfway up. Exhale, soften, bend your knees. Head and neck is heavy. Reverse your swan dive. Gentle arch back. And exhale, hands to heart center. Tadasana Mountain Pose. And again, inhale, shoot your fingertips down, out, and up. Gentle arch back. Exhale, so one, dive it in. Head and neck is heavy. Inhale to lengthen. Exhale to soften. Reverse your swan dive. Gentle arch back. And exhale. Tadasana Mountain Pose. Let's do one more for good measure. Inhale, shoot your fingertips down, out, and up. Gentle arch back. Exhale, so one, dive it in. Head and neck is heavy. 
Inhale to lengthen. Exhale to soften. Reverse your swan dive. Gentle and flex. Exhale. Tadasana Mountain Pose. And releasing hands, arms along side body. Excellent. Now from here, go ahead and step to the center of your yoga mat, if you would, please. And have a block handy just in case for Trikonasana Triangle Pose. So I like to just set it to my mat like that. Sorry, I'm having a little bit of a hair issue here today. <laughs> so with, uh, with while well, I re kind of pin this piece of hair back, go ahead and step your feet out wide. Take the arms out from the shoulders, ankles under the wrists. Let's start with the left side today. I kind have of a left side theme going on today, starting with our hand to big toe pose series, but left toes out from the hip and right toes slightly turned in. So I'm looking for heel to instep or heel to heel alignment here. Relax your shoulders, spiral your left thigh back so your knee faces the same way up your toes. Now as you exhale, remember hips are gonna go this way. So we hinge at the hips, your hips go this way, and we reach and stretch till we can't reach stretch any further. And then we windmill the arms. Now your left hand can be anywhere from your upper thigh down to the earth even, or yoga block. Just as long as the torso is kept in the same plane as that left leg. It'll come forward a little bit, but we just don't want this to happen. We don't want the chest to drop towards the earth. The butt sticks out. We keep the heart open. Tailbone is dropped towards that back heel. Beautiful, using the strength of that right arm, right leg come through to center. Let's do a little reverse triangle, turn your palms up. Inhale, exhale into your reverse triangle. Draw your upper shoulder back. And inhale, exhale into Virabhadrasana two, warrior two. Relax your shoulders, find that 90 degree angle with your left leg. Knee is in line with pinky toe side of the foot, not falling in towards the big toe. Extending but not reaching. Right armpit is over that back hip. And we don't want our warrior two to get jealous of our reverse triangle. So turn your palms up. <clears throat> and let's reverse our warrior. Inhale, come through to center. Go ahead and begin to straighten that left knee. Set your block to the opposite side. We're just going to sw switch the feet up. I'm about to do the splits here. Right toes out from the hip. Left toes slightly turned in. Inhale. Exhale, hips go to the left. And we reach, stretch till you can't stretch any, reach and stretch any further, windmill the arms. Using that strength of that upper arm, your left leg, inhale yourself through to center, turn your palms up, reverse triangle. Virabhadrasana two, warrior two. Inhale, come through to center. Exhale, let's settle into our warrior two. Shoulders relaxed. Flip your palms up, reverse your warrior. Now this time as we inhale, come through to center, turn your palms up, reach, stretch it up towards the sky. Let's move into down dog. So frame your front foot, lift your back heel, spin your back foot forward. Front foot steps back to down dog. 
Now from downward facing dog, we'll come into plank. So you'll lift your heels away from your mat as your shoulders shift above your wrists. Press down through your hands. Spiral your inner thighs. Pivot the belly, lifts in and up. Pausing here. Now from here, tops of the knees to the mat, tops of the feet, lower your body all the way to the earth, wrists at the bottom of the rib cage, spiral your inner thighs just like we did. Inhale, cobra. Exhale it down, down dog. Just briefly here. Begin to walk your feet towards your hands or hands towards the feet. And when they get there, inhale to gently look up lengthen, exhale, soften, reverse your swan dive. Gentle arch back, exhale, Tadasana Mountain Pose. Three breaths here. As you're ready, only when you're ready, you're releasing hands, arms, along the side body. Great. Now, from here, we are going to come into Eagle Pose, our, our balance for today. So, as always, feel free to come off your yoga mat to some wall space. If you have a chair handy, you can practice alongside a chair or pull the chair to your mat. Um, but let's learn the arms first, and then we'll add the legs. So externally rotate the arms out from the shoulders. Now, I'm not gonna mirror you, even try to mirror you this time because I get way too confused because we're doing arms, we're getting crissy crossy with the arms and the legs. So just listen carefully. Right arm comes across the chest. Left arm comes on top of the right. So my arms are crisscrossed. Bending the elbows. Turn your palms out. Right hand is going to come towards your nose. I'm going to stand sideways for this. Left hand comes out, away from you, and then up back towards you It like it missed you. <laughs> Drawing forearms towards each other. Now, if this is too much palm to palm, try back of hand to back of hand, or you can give yourself a hug here. That works too. So these are our arms. We'll pause here for a moment, little micro bench your knees. Now this may be enough for you today, stay here, or take your elbows forward and then inhale the arms up higher. Just be mindful that when you draw, drew the elbows forward, your little tailbone didn't pop out here, okay? Inhale, as you exhale, go ahead and gently release couple of shoulder rolls one way and the other way. Take the arms out. So we're just switching up the arms. Left arm comes across first, followed by the right. Bend the elbows, turn the palms. Left hand comes towards your nose. Right hand comes out and around, comes back towards you. Palm to palm, back of hand to back of hand, or give yourself a hug. Stay here or take the elbows forward and inhale the arms up a little higher. Inhale as you exhale, go ahead and gently release shoulders, shoulders, shoulders one way and then the other way. Fantastic. So those are the arms in Garudasana Eagle Pose. Now we have to add the legs. Now, if adding the legs and the arms together is too much, uh, we are, I mean, we are working on balance here. So I would definitely recommend doing the leg proportion. Um, but if adding the arms is too much, just take, keep hands to the hips here, or you can take hands to heart center instead. So with that said, go ahead and take your hands to your hips, please. Feet about hip distance apart. Now, I will mirror you for this part. Bending your knees, 
we'll do this in steps. Shift weight to the uh, right side body, your right, my left, but your right. And then you're going to pick your left foot up and cross it over. So we'll call this variation one. Stay here, maybe add the arms. Moving on, bend into your right knee a bit deeper and see if you can pick up your left toes to balance. Stay here or add the arms. Last but not least, I'm going to bend even further into that right knee to then wrap my left toes around the shin. Stay here or let's try adding the arms. So you're going to take the opposite arm across first. So whatever leg is on top, you're going to take opposite arm, right arm across the chest, followed by the left. Bend your elbows, turn the palms, right hand towards the nose, left hand comes out and around. Stay here or allow the hips to sink. Take the arms up higher. Breathe. Make sure you're not holding your breath. Inhale as you exhale. Woo! <laughs> Go ahead and release. Well done. Give your legs a little shake, shake, shake before trying that on the opposite side. <sighs> nice full breath. Exhale it out. All right, let's do it. Hands to the hips. Bend the knees. Weight shifts into left side body. We start by crossing uh, the right leg over the left. Stay here or we'll add on. Bend deeper into the balancing leg. Pick your right toes up. Or even bend further into the balancing leg so you can perhaps wrap your toes around the shin, the calf rather. Stay here or let's add the arms. So left arm comes across first, followed by the right. Bend the elbows, turn the palms. Left hand towards your nose, right hand comes out and around. Inhale as you exhale, whoo, release. <laughs> Give your legs a good shake, shake, shake. You can make circles or roll the shoulders rather one way and the other way. Well done. Come towards the front of your mat for a half sun salute to get back towards the earth. Hands to heart center, feet about hip distance apart. Inhale, shoot your fingertips down, out and up. Gentle arch back. Exhale, we swan dive it in. Sit bones lifting away from the heels. Head and neck is heavy. Inhale to lengthen. Exhale to soften. Bend your knees. Give yourself permission to really soften here. Plant those hands down to the earth. Downward facing dog. Now from downward facing dog, let's release the knees to the mat as wide as feels good to you. And let's sit, sink back into your extended child's pose. Remember elbows lifted away from the earth. Come up onto fingertips if you like. And as you're ready, join me in a side stretch. Release your palms to the earth. If you're resting on fingertips, gently lift the forehead. Let's keep the left side first theme going. Walk your hands as far over to the left as you can. And then you'll draw your right hip back. So you should feel a nice side stretch along a right side body. And then if it's available to you, you can rest your head to the floor. Lifting the forehead as you're ready, begin to walk your hands over as far 
to the right as you can. Draw your left hip back, rest your forehead. Breathing into this left side body. In other words, seeing if you can allow that part of the body to move with the breath where you're feeling the stretch happening. Gently lifting the forehead. Let's walk ourselves back through to center and back towards ourselves. Find a comfortable seat. You can go ahead and move to the center of your mat. And let's move into a couple of twists and then it'll be ready. Uh, it'll be time for Shavasana. So sitting up nice and tall, relax your shoulders. Externally rotate the arms out from the shoulders. Inhale it up. Exhale, we twist to our right, leading with the belly, then the rib cage, collarbones, then the head. Shoulders relaxed away from the ears. In your own time, gently unwind through to center. Exhale, we twist to that opposite side. Inhale, gently unwind through to center. Take the arms up and turn your palms out. Exhale, cascade the breath all the way to the earth. Okay, nice job. Uh, we will move into Shavasana, then our final relaxation. So if you happen to take off any layers while we're practicing, now would be a great time to um, put those back on. I always like to grab my blanket to use as a headrest. And as you're ready, you'll go ahead and lay down on your yoga mat. Now, if it does not feel good to lay on the uh, earth with your legs extended, just take constructive rest like we did earlier. But I'm going to extend my legs so that my heels are towards the corners of my mat. I'm going to lay, go ahead and lay down. And I'm gonna make that same adjustment um, as I did earlier for centering. So I'm just gonna take a second, I'm gonna take my hands, I'm gonna press into my heels, and I'm just going to kind of scoop my butt towards my heels. Hands then can rest on the belly, or just allow the arms to splay out a long side body. Palms facing up, and allow your fingers to curl in naturally. Take a second to make any little adjustments that you need to. Make sure the weight of the body is distributed evenly along the earth. Relaxing your face muscles, relaxing your tongue and jaw neck and shoulders and chest. Relaxing arms, hands, fingers, stomach and hips, buttocks, thighs, knees, shins, calves, ankles, and feet. Releasing any tension out through your toes. The weight of the body is heavy sinking, melting into the earth. Taking rest here, enjoying 
and absorbing the effects of your yoga practice today until I come to call you back. And in your own time, beginning to make small movements with all the fingers, toes, ankles, and wrists in any way that feels good to you. Drawing the arms overhead for a nice long full body stretch, lengthening out the fingers all the way up through the toes. Bending the knees, taking them to the chest, giving them a squeeze, a little rock from side to side as you feel ready to. And gently releasing the knees as you allow yourself to roll to either side of the body. And just pausing up here a moment longer, thinking of intention, dedication if you had set one. Noticing how you feel and perhaps even mentally thanking yourself for taking time out of your busy day to do something good for yourself, body, mind, and soul. And as you're ready, using the strength then of your hands, arms to gently push yourself up to your comfortable seated position. Drawing the arms up alongside the ears for one last final stretch. And as you exhale, hands find their way to the heart, head surrenders towards the heart. Thank you so much for your energy and effort today. I hope you embrace the sense of well-being that you've created for yourself and take that with you through the rest of your day. The light within me acknowledges and honors the light within you. Namaste. Thank you so much for sharing your Hatha Yoga practice with me today. I hope the practice left you feeling centered, grounded, yet energized. Uh, if you liked the video, which I hope you did, uh, don't forget or hesitate to give this video a thumbs up, a like, and to subscribe to the Essential Farms YouTube channel. Uh, because when you do that, it helps others to be able to find these videos and to practice along as well. So until next time, take care. Namaste. Bye-bye.